Good morning. Good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you here who's coming for the second service. Let's just start our service with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here. Thank you for showing us the way. Lord, you've been our king. You've been our servant king, Father. One who took our place on the cross. One who came to serve and not to be served. Father, thank you for your example that we could look up to you to serve people. Not expect to be served, but to serve people. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done in our lives. Thank you for leading us thus far to come here to meditate your word and to sing the praises of your glory. As we do that this morning, Father, we pray that you will speak to our hearts in a new way. You will refresh us in a new way. You will touch us in a new way, Lord. That we will be filled and we will be satisfied as we go home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we all stand and sing? There's a recorded music that will come up. We can sing along and worship the Lord. From the new came helpless babe and turned our world to glory bell. not to be served but to serve and give your life that we might live is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to Oh, 
So let us learn how to serve And in our life enthrone Him Each other's needs to for the children's focus. Good morning and welcome to our children's focus today. Welcome to those here and to those watching online today or later in the week. The church's liturgical year or the church calendar in simple terms goes through seasons just like we have spring, summer, autumn and winter. In the church year we have the seasons Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, Pentecost, Trinity, and what we call Ordinary Time. Today is the last Sunday in the church year, and this Sunday is known as Christ the King. Then next Sunday, the new church year starts with the Advent season, as we prepare our hearts for the coming King. Now I've got my Bible box here, and I just want to show you some bits that will relate to today's story. We have a crown. I'll just put it on, but I'm not going to wear it. <laughs> we, have various, we have various crosses. So this is the cross we use on Palm Sunday. This is a holding cross that you can take in your bag. I think Regina actually gave me this. So you can just walk around with it in the house or when you're out. And we have the, fo- the cross that came from the vestry. And I have a gift. So today we look ahead to the start of Advent next week and looking at the end of something. Our reading today talks about the death of Jesus Christ where we can focus on the cross where Jesus took his final breaths. It does seem a little strange to talk about this before welcoming his birth, which we are thankful for, but it indicates a change. But we can also be thankful for his death and resurrection. Jesus was the greatest gift given. He came to earth and was born as a person to live among us. But we also need to understand why he came. He was born to die. He grew up and lived with people. But then he went to the cross and gave up his life in a very painful and shocking way. I'm just going to read to you a simple version of the um, reading today, which the children will have in their junior church group today, but it's from a children's Bible, and and it's on their root session. The Romans took Jesus to a hill known as the Skull and lifted him up onto the cross to die. There were two more crosses, one to his left and one to his right. Two criminals hung there. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Roman soldiers played games of chance to see who would get Jesus' clothes when he was dead. People stood in silence and stared at the suffering men. Jesus heard the Jewish leaders laughing at him as he hung there dying. He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah, God's chosen one. To these men, Jesus was a joke. And they weren't the only ones laughing. The soldiers offered Jesus sour wine. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself, they sneered, and the cruel jokes weren't all spoken. Above Jesus, there was a small sign with, this is the king of the Jews, written on it. One of the criminals heard all the laughter and decided to join in. 
If you're God's chosen one, save yourself and us too while you're at it. The second criminal snapped back. What's wrong with you? Don't you fear God? We are here because we have committed a crime, but this man, and he nodded towards Jesus, has done nothing wrong. He turned his head and said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now to summarise, Jesus had been found guilty of crimes, even though he'd done nothing wrong. He was brought out to die a criminal's death on a cross. He was mocked and hated and tormented, but he let it happen. He could have come down from the cross, but he stayed there. He suffered so that we wouldn't have to. Because of this, we have everlasting life with God. Jesus died for everyone, for those that are good and those that are bad. We all make mistakes and do things wrong, but Jesus loves us, whatever we do. We can be forgiven for doing wrong things, and he wanted his bullies to be forgiven as well. He told the apologetic man next to him that he was also forgiven. Jesus died for us so that our sins can be forgiven. We can have faith in Jesus, and when we die, go to heaven to be with him. So this gift of Jesus cannot be wrapped up like this gift here. It's a blessing and a beautiful thing. Jesus wants us to be with him forever. Let's pray. Jesus, we worship you, our great and wonderful King. Help us to be more like you. We thank you that you died for us on the cross. We thank you for remembering us and for taking away our sins. Amen. Thank you, Val. Let's, we've come to a time of confession. Let's, in an attitude of prayer, come before God and bring all that we have done wrong before him. The Bible says, Jesus was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with the deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so that we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of all of us. The Bible says that when we come and confess our sins, he is ready to forgive us and set us free. Shall we together say the prayer that's, that's come up on the screen? Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sins. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of our salvation. Through our Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and worship as uh, the recorded music plays. Let's join with it in worship. Oh, 
offered for my sake to bring me back home again. When I was lost, you poured your life out for me. Name above all names, Jesus, I love you. Giver of mercy, the fountain of life for me, my spirit is lifted to soar on the eagle's wings. What love is this that fills my heart with treasure? Name above all. I can get an old, the one true and faithful God, the beautiful Savior, still reigning in power and love. With all my heart, I worship you forever. Name above all. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. His cornerstone, His solid ground. Burn through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease. My all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain. Gift of love and righteousness, stoned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. Then in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, and bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost his grip on me. For I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No 
guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me, from my first cry to final bell. Jesus commands my destiny. Father, we thank you for the hope that we have in you, Lord. Yes, Father, you are the one, you are the only one who rose from the grave and you are alive today, guiding each one of us, Father. Yes, Lord, as the song says, no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck us from your hand, Father. We thank you for that security, that is, in our, that is in you for us. Yes, Lord, we thank you for that security. The everlasting hope that is in you. Amen. Please be seated while, um, sorry, Jennifer would bring us the reading, then Regina would expound us the word for us. reading is from Luke 23, 33 to 43. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been just condemned, condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserved for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. Uh, shall we bow our heads in prayer? Loving God, we thank you that you have gathered us on this morning in this house of worship. Thank you that you are present with us right now. And we pray, Lord, that as we listen, would you open our hearts and our minds that we might hear a word from you, not from a human mouth, but a word from you. And let that word accomplish its purpose in our lives. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, today, as Val has already explained, uh, it's um, this uh, Sunday uh, before Advent, and uh, it's when we celebrate Christ the King. Now, in biblical times, and certainly in um, uh, medieval times, Kings were supreme rulers with strict systems of governance and control. They fought to amass land, and uh, the more territories that they occupied, the more powerful they became. 
They led people in times of war. At home, they administered justice and kept the law and order. Kings were rulers of the nations. They had real power, and they were held in awe, reverence, and fear. This is unlike modern kings and queens, whose roles have changed over the years to become figureheads, with their role more, mainly uh, as uh, advisory. So you can imagine how provocative it was to call Jesus king. The notice that was placed above Jesus' cross with the words, this is the king of the Jews, would have drawn a lot of attention to a whole lot of people who passed by. In the account that we heard from Jennifer just now, Jesus is displayed as a criminal. There's an irony in that. And there are a lot of ironies in this passage. Pilate had ordered that the notice be placed above Jesus' head as a way to mock him. Jesus displayed no signs of trappings of kingship as we know it. Yet the truth is that Jesus is the king of kings and lord of lords. Jesus had to come to save you and me. Jesus did not come to overthrow Roman rule. Jesus came to reveal God and his kingdom. He was a different sort of a king. He used his power not to oppress or to control, but to liberate and to redeem. Humanity had fallen under the bondage of sin, and as a result, a chasm had been created between God and his creation. Only through the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross would we be able to be redeemed and set free and be reconciled back to God. In his mission statement, at the beginning of his ministry, Jesus revealed what sort of a king he had come to be. We hear it in the words of Luke 4. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He came to tell the good news of God, the good news of God's saving grace. He came to reveal God to us, to set us free from the bondage to sin. Jesus was concerned not for his own protection or comfort. His concern was to bring salvation to others. His was an upside down way of doing kingship. Consequently, he was misunderstood and hung on the cross. He could have come down, he could have saved himself, but then where would you and I be today? Condemned to a life of separation from God? But now, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can claim adoption and citizenship in the kingdom where King Jesus reigns supreme. Yes, Jesus is the king of reconciliation. He reconciled us back to God and to one another. Jew and Gentile were alienated from each other, but now we are one new humanity because of Jesus' death on the cross. He brought us all into God's big family. Yes, Jesus' death brings peace and reconciliation between God and his people and between peoples. As he hung on the cross, Jesus calls for forgiveness for those who mocked him, those who spat on him, yes, those who beat his body to a pulp, indeed those who nailed him to the cross. This is the king of forgiveness. 
So when we say, when he says to us, forgive those who hurt you, those who malign you, pray for those who persecute you, he knows what that means. He has trodden the path before us. He is the suffering king and he empathizes with us in our suffering and pain. He knows all about it. This king does not ask us to do what he himself is not prepared to do. More than that, he is there to empower us to do what he asks of us. This is a king like no other. In his kingdom, King Jesus serves his subjects and the subjects serve the king. We see it in John 13. Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, he wrapped his towels around his waist to serve his disciples by washing their feet. That is what his kingdom looks like. Those who are great are the ones who serve. In Matthew 20, Jesus has taught his disciples what greatness looks like in God's kingdom. It's for those who are least, those who serve. They are the ones who are considered great. Now that calls for humility, and humility was the hallmark of our King Jesus. Because a few days earlier, before this account, Jesus had entered Jerusalem riding on a donkey, not a chariot or a horseback. Unlike the kings of the world, Jesus rode on the fall of a donkey. He left his home in heaven to be born not in a palace, but to be born among animals in a manger. Although he was God, he did not count equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, but he humbled himself to death, even the death on the cross. This is humility personified. A true servant king who died in the service of humanity he created. We saw a glimpse of that servant leadership from our late Queen Elizabeth II. She served with humility. She served with love. She served to the very end. That is a glimpse of what kingship, leadership, looks like in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' kingdom, we do not give backhands to gain favor, as we see in many places today. We do not do good works to gain salvation. We do good works because we have been saved and we want to serve our Lord and King by serving others. We do not work to earn eternal life. No, it's a free gift to any who accept Jesus as king of their lives. It does not matter how dark our past or how late we come to him, although we would want to come in early to, to him early so that we can have a lot of time to serve him. But no, he, we can come to him at any time. Jesus' arms are always wide open to welcome any who, re, who repent, as we see with the thief on the cross. With only hours to live, yet because he acknowledged Jesus as his king, this thief was assured a place in heaven with Jesus that very night. And his forgiveness is extended not to one person, not to the good. His forgiveness is extended to everyone. God is ready to forgive all who repent and put their trust in Jesus, however wicked our past. Why is this forgiveness so possible? It is possible because of God's unconditional love for you and for me. 
when he sent Jesus to redeem us from, from our sin, God was displaying his love. He sent his only son, as we hear in John 3.16. His only son. For God so loved you and me. He so loved the world that he sent his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That is the love that God has for you and for me. He is ready to forgive us no matter our past. He is an all-inclusive God. His kingdom is a kingdom where love reigns where forgiveness reigns, where peace reigns. His is a kingdom like no other. If we acknowledge our sinfulness and recognize that Jesus is the only one who has the power to save us, and when we repent and put our trust in him, he is only too ready to forgive us and welcome us into his kingdom so we can share eternal life with him as children of God in his big, big family. God's kingdom comes in part in the here and now. When we choose to follow Jesus, we enter into it now. But we shall live in its fullness when Christ shall return to usher in a new heaven and a new earth where he shall reign supreme, where he shall reign forever and ever. We get to share in that eternal life with him. But in the meantime, we are to go about spreading the good news of Jesus and bringing glimpses of his kingdom to those around us. Hence, we pray, thy kingdom come. This is a call for us to bring God's kingdom to people's lives so that they too can see glimpses of God's kingdom and desire to follow Jesus into his kingdom. And there are many opportunities available for us to show God's love, God's compassion, God's forgiveness, God's love, especially at such a time as this, in our nation and in the world at large. The world is earning for love. The world is earning for compassion. The world is earning for healing. The world is earning for peace. We have a choice to make. Those who hung Jesus on the cross dissociated themselves from his kingship. They found it impossible to accept him as king of their lives. Each one of us here has a choice, whether to enthrone Jesus as Lord and King of our lives or not. He does not compel us. He is a gentle king and waits for us to make a choice to align ourselves with the kingdoms of this world or to align ourselves with the kingdom where Jesus reigns. When we pray, your kingdom come, do we really understand those words? Do we mean that? That Jesus should rule in our hearts, in our wills, in our homes, in our workplaces, in our finances? in all areas of our lives? Or have we put barriers so that we do not allow him free reign in certain aspects of our lives? He does not force his way, but those who choose his way of ruling will have eternal life. Ultimately, his kingdom will win over the kingdoms of this world which are passing. We may not find it easy to live the kingdom way, the way Jesus wants us to. We may find it hard to give him free reign over all aspects of our lives. We may find it hard to let him reign in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our wills, in our dreams, indeed, in all areas of our lives. That is why, though, he left us his Holy Spirit, because he knew we would need the help, the strength, to live as children of the kingdom, reflecting his love, his forgiveness, his compassion, as we serve him 
by serving those he places in our path. Today, will you recognize Jesus as king today? Will you enthrone him as king over every aspect of your life? He is a gentle king and waits for you to allow him free reign over your life. If you do, he will guide you into life eternal. We'll take a few moments of reflection. As we ponder on that message, let us hear afresh the words of a very famous song, Lord Reign in Me, and ask ourselves, are we ready to let Jesus reign in those areas of our lives? Lord, reign in me. But my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you would reign in me again. Over all my dreams, in my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Over every thought, over every word, may my life reflect the beauty of the Lord. So Lord, won't you reign in me again? Come and reign in me again. Thank you, Regina, for those powerful words. Shall we take a few moments to reflect on what has been spoken to us as we get into our intercessions? Father, we come to you, Lord, this morning with an open heart. Help us to reign. Help us that we might allow our hearts that you may reign in us, Father. You may reign in us. Father, Every day of our lives, let it be the cry, God reign in us. God reign in us. Father, this morning we bring our plans, our dreams, and our expectations to you. We put it on the altar. We put it on the altar before you, Lord. Come, Father. Come, reign in us. Reign in us, Father. Where there are areas that we are struggling to give up, Father, we Confess that this morning and open it up to you and ask the Holy Spirit to come and reign in us, Lord. Reign in us. Father, in the, Getsem in the Garden of Gethsemane, as you said, as you surrendered and said, not my will, but let thy will be done. Father, help us to have that prayer this morning. Not, your, not my will, Lord, but your will be done in our lives. Father, this morning, we 
come before you, we pray for the people of Ukraine. Father, very difficult circumstances, Lord. Many are without electricity. Many are without water in this cold. As we see, we, we hear about snowfalls in many areas there. Father, we pray for an end to this conflict. We pray that you will change the hearts of people who are responsible for this. Father, we pray that you will stop this war. Father, this morning we bring before you our brothers and sisters who are suffering persecution in different places in this world. We pray that your peace will overshadow the sufferings and your light will shine on the darkness. Give them your hope and your strength and surround them with your love, Father, as they Stand steadfast for you. Father, we pray for the needs of our country, the difficulties that people are going through, difficulties in rising costs. Lord, we pray that you will open up doors, that no one in this country will go hungry. Lord, you are the same Lord who fed the 5,000 with two fishes and five loaves of bread. And we pray that you will do the same with the people in need today. Father, we pray that you will open up avenues. You will rise up people who will stand for their causes. Lord, we pray that, Lord, that everybody in this country will be fed. Father, we pray for a revival on this land. We pray for the spiritual uplifting of this place, Father. We pray that a revival will sweep over this nation. We pray that people will get into the realization of who you are. and what salvation means in their lives. Father, we just pray that, Lord, quicken those seeds that are sown in their lives to grow, to grow and bear fruit. Father, we pray for um, meetings. We pray for uh, communications. We pray for interactions. We pray for any of the experiences, Father, that they go through to open up their hearts to you. In this time of need, we pray that you will, you will be their Jehovah Jireh. You will raise up good Samaritans, Lord, across this nation. So many initiatives are already happening. We pray that you will bless them. Father, we, we, we pray that there will be many more that will rise up to the occasion to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, and to visit people in prison. Father, we just pray for your grace, your love, to surround this nation at this time of need. We pray for each one of us here, in the church and those who are watching online. Father, we just pray that the Holy Spirit, who knows the innermost parts of our life, the innermost thoughts of our being, Father, we pray that you will deal with them. You will be with them, Father. Whatever is their 
question today whatever is there anxiety this morning whatever is there lord difficulties that they see before them father we just pray that you will be their guide you will hold their hand o oh god and you will lead them father we ask for your blessing upon every ministry in this church especially uh, those that are going to happen around the christmas time especially for the christmas journey lord a night shelter pro- probably we don't know our church will be involved or if it is happening in other places lord we just pray that lord your hand will be upon that your divine hand will be upon that and it will be it will turn out to be a blessing a life changer for many uh, who 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 are part of that journey in jesus name we pray amen amen shall we all stand and worship the you know we have this final song my hope is built jesus blood and as we do that the baskets will come around if you are willing to contribute to the uh administration and finances of this church you are more than welcome please do so thank you my hope is built on nothing less than jesus blood and righteousness i dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy trust in jesus name Darkness seems to hide its face. I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, corners. Strong in the Savior's love, through the storm is Lord, Lord of all. When He shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in Him be found. Dressed in His righteousness alone, faultless I stand before the throne. Faultless I stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Saviour's love. be seated a few announcements and then the blessing uh christing the cubes are available out there if you know if you can pick it up and bring in the changes in the next couple of weeks and uh you know this can be brought back to the christingle service on the 11th of december uh that we will be having that's one and christmas journey uh, it starts from the week of 5th of december 
and we still need some cars here. Uh, if you could spare some time, just connect with Val, and she would she would be able to guide you there. And we have a Christmas fair coming next week, which is 26th November on Saturday. Uh, please, please do come, bring your friends and participate in it. There are some leaflets still to be delivered and a few roads. If you can help, it's at the it's at the back. If you can take it and help deliver it to some of the roads that are still yet to be delivered. Uh, well, any other uh, thing to do? Say, okay, thank you. So now let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you for this time. Father, we thank you that we could come and be in your presence. Father, as we have rededicated ourselves this morning for your reign upon our lives, upon every area of our lives, Father, we pray that you will take hold of us and you will guide us each day of the week according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessing, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Thank you. Have a good week. God bless you.